to do forced overtime this evening. <clears throat> Comrades and friends, this is a report on <clears throat> outreach and distribution of Workers' World newspaper and other party literature. After initially consulting with Workers' World editor Deirdre Griswold, who was enthusiastic about the idea, for a number of years I've been distributing Workers' World newspaper to more than 100 locations across the city each week. So it was felt, thank you. So it was felt that it would be helpful for me to give a description of what I do and why it's important and offer suggestions of what comrades and friends can do to further the party's reach with its newspaper. As for the importance of distributing the party's uh, literature, you can gauge it, and I'm sure I'm describing the experience of a number of comrades besides myself uh, by the fact that I wouldn't be standing here giving this report, and in fact, I never would have joined the party at all had it not been for the distribution of the party's newspapers. It's a long story, and this is supposed to be a short report, so I can't describe it in a lot of detail. But suffice it to say that a courageous GI risked administrative punishment, if not a court-martial, by distributing a Workers' World Party-affiliated newspaper called The Bond, the newspaper of the military unit of Workers' World Party during the Vietnam War, the American Servicemen's Union, which had more than 10,000 active duty members of the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard, of which I was one. As I walked into the mess hall one day in July 1969 at Walter Reed Army Medical Center in Washington, where I was stationed, he handed me a copy of the bond. I don't know if he was caught or not, but I do know that he changed my life, and the newspaper changed my life. This was a time of gigantic anti-war demonstrations, especially in Washington, and the radical underground newspapers that I and a lot of other GIs and civilians read, but the bond was different denouncing the military, the brass, the officers, and the war. It was electrifying. I joined immediately. As a quick example of the power and influence and reach of the party's newspapers and literature, I, as a military postal clerk, was able, with the assistance of party members in New York, to distribute copies of the bond, calling for active resistance to the military brass and to the war, to thousands of soldiers, first in Washington and later, after I wrote a scathing anti-war letter that was published on June 4, 1970 in the Washington Post and signed Sergeant Wilton E. Gill, Jr., that's me, Walter Reed Army Medical Center in Washington, and resulted 72 hours later in written orders being cut and handed to me, ordering me to Vietnam, and Vietnam and Cambodia also. The distribution of the newspaper itself was legal. Since I had access as a military postal clerk to the names and military APO mailing addresses of thousands of GIs. And the party sent them all copies of the bond by first class mail, perfectly legal. So I didn't have to go to the stockade. But, but uh, as long as I didn't get caught swiping all the names and addresses. <laughs> However, when I got back to the States and got my discharge and was staying with my parents that first month in October 1971, we all watched the lead story on the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite about a mass mutiny at Firebase Pace on the Cambodian border where dozens of GIs refused orders to go out on patrol. Firebase Pace was one of the firebases to which I had flown regularly on a cargo plane delivering the GIs mail, including many copies of the bond. Such ever-growing mass mutinies, <laughs> fragging killings of officers with fragmentation grenades and other acts of individual and mass resistance, and most of all, of course, the heroic mass resistance of the Vietnamese people to U.S. imperialism resulted in its ignominious and humiliating defeat. You can draw your own conclusions about the power and influence of the party's newspapers and literature on historic world events. That's why the revolutionary headline on the front page of Workers' World newspaper each week can be found showing clearly through the clear, clear plastic door of more than 100 multiplex newspaper boxes throughout the city, which you may have seen on street corners. For every working class and oppressed person who actually takes that paper out of the news box and takes it home, many passers-by see and note the week's most important news headline from a revolutionary working class perspective. That's what party visibility and outreach means to the masses, and we have to get it in their hands each week 
not just passively in used boxes, but actively the old-fashioned way by handing them a copy like that courageous GI long ago handed me and many others copies. Sharon told me years ago that she spoke to someone who mentioned that they found out about the party by getting a newspaper from one of those boxes. So it's not just me and other comrades and friends in this room who are attracted to the party by the distribution of its newspapers and literature. The potential is there in this way to constantly, constantly let people know about the party. Not to mention the posters, flyers, stickers, and leaflets that we constantly put up on street corners. The party's newspaper and literature and information on the internet helps a lot nowadays. But active outreach is even better than passive outreach. For example, even though I loved the bar and it was a loyal member of the ASU, it was only when party and ASU organizer John Lewis, who had been sending me copies of Workers' World newspaper, wrote to me and invited me to come to New York and work with the ASU. It was only then that I actually met and joined the party. The, the personal touch helps the most. And that's what we have to concentrate on. And now that the global capitalist system is falling to pieces in front of everyone's eyes, from Greece to Spain to Italy to Detroit to Haiti to Terrier Square, Egypt, to hundreds of shuttered schools and hospitals across the country, to the shuttered and locked out U.S. government, to the halls of gridlocked and paralyzed Congress, working class and oppressed people are increasingly desperate and all the more electrified to see this wonderful newspaper, Workers' World. And they must see it each and every week. We have to win new members to the party, and this is a most excellent way to do it. Take it from me personally as one of those. We all want to give back to others the precious change in our life that was given to us by finding the party. And there's no better way to do it than to follow it up personally whenever possible. Comrade Steve Milley says, let's give Wall Street a Dien Ben Fu and make a socialist revolution. That's exactly what we're going to do. In the first week of May 1975, the, first, the week after the Vietnamese people drove U.S. imperialism out of Vietnam from the roof of the U.S. Embassy in frantic helicopter takeoffs, the front page of workers, the front, front page headline of Workers World newspaper read, Vietnam belongs to the workers. Shortly after that, the week after the mass resistance of the Cambodian people overthrew the U.S. public government in Phnom Penh and brought a workers' party to power, the front page headline of Workers' World read, Cambodia belongs to the people. Comrades, I want to distribute an issue of Workers' World newspaper in those newspaper boxes which reads, the U.S. belongs to the oppressed. And it will. Long live Workers' World newspaper and long live Workers' World party.